What's up everyone? Deejus here. Welcome back to the Choosing a CEO series. Now, this episode we're going to be looking into Choosing a CEO in Tier 2. Now, Tier 2, I notice a lot of people like to pick favorites. I myself, when I first started, just chose Olaf every single time because I figured it's no good, global damage good, without really thinking it through, and this ended up me getting whooped a few times on certain maps. So today I'd like to focus on tier two, what maps to use each CO, and what playstyles to use to fully utilize their strengths. So without further ado, let's roll. Ah yes, tier two. That's the one that has Eagle, Max, Olaf, and Sammy. Let's start off with the most straightforward CO, Max. So with Max, you don't need to worry about artillery zoning, other complex tactics. You basically just make tanks and other vehicles and just smash and bash things. Basically, you're just gonna be focusing on direct units. Generally, Max prefers shorter matches, not because his CO powers don't scale well like Kindle's in tier three, but because the competition in his tier, their superpowers only get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. So he's a solid all around CO, but the competition in tier two is stiff, so he prefers to go smaller, quicker matches where he can just smash immediately and use his advantage in direct combat. Generally, Max operates slightly better in fog due to the fact that artillery are less common and his disadvantage in indirect combat is not as pronounced. One of my favorite things about Max is he's one of the few COs where you can freely choose between the CO power and the super CO power because both are great. You really can't go wrong. You can really adjust your usage according to the situation. Like, for example, if you want to get an early lead, you can go for just a CO power, whereas if you want to go for a death blow, you can save up for a super CO power and try to end the game. The thing to keep in mind when using the powers is the calculations behind them. If you have one comm tower and use a CO power, it enables your tanks to move one movement further and one shot infantry on planes, which allows for nice wall breaking. Whereas if you get the super CO power, you're able to one shot infantry on forests and you can also extend your movement by two spaces. So if there are a lot of force, maybe you want to save up for a super CO power to wall break. Whereas if it's a small map with planes or roads or whatever, just pop your CO power. Regarding maps, Max prefers open maps where artillery aren't very viable and there are minimal choke points. So his tanks can run around free and smash and bash and do a lot of early game damage. He also likes copter heavy maps, or maps where there are a lot of airports, because his copters and direct air units also get the direct firepower boosts that his other units enjoy, and he also gets the movement bonus for them during powers. This next CO is very dear and close to my heart, and my most commonly picked CO in all of Advance Wars and Advance Wars by Web, Olaf. He, similar to Max, is a straightforward CO, I'd argue even more straightforward as he has no day-to-day -day powers. He relies exclusively on his super CO power, which is devastating. We'll go into more detail in a bit, but he's one of my favorites as a safe pick because on the vast majority of maps, he'll perform pretty damn well. And my goodness, let's talk about that super CO power. The first most noticeable thing about Olaf's super CO power is the global damage. Two damage globally. Doesn't matter if it's standard, fog, high funds, whatever. You're doing two damage to every single one of your opponent's units. You don't need to plan anything. All you have to do is press the button and there's two damage done everywhere, which is awesome. The thing about Olaf's super CO power other than the global damage is the snow, which is a nice one-two punch so you can knock out your opponent in one turn. Snow in this game is broken. I'll just say it, folks. Snow is like two, three times better than rain is because it slows down nearly all movement of your opponent's troops. It's basically, it slows down everything unless it's moving over a road, a bridge, or a property. Even air units are affected. The two great things that happen with this movement restriction for snow is you can trap units and you can stop reinforcements. Now, air units are particularly susceptible to be trapped because they get half their movement. Battlecopters and bombers can only move three spaces, so you can basically anticipate this happening, move your anti-air in distance, and they'll only be able to move three spaces away, allowing you to finish them off the next turn after the snow ends. In addition to trapping, stopping or at least slowing down enemy reinforcements can also be crucial as a part of snow, as it can enable you for a strong attack without fear of strong retaliation by your opponent because they have weakened units and units that are cut off from their supply lines because they can't reinforce them due to the movement restriction of snow. Due to the fact that global damage scales to the amount of units your opponent has, 
Olaf, in most instances, you can take your time with him with equal properties and sit back and chill. He's more on the stally side of CEOs, unless you're versus Eagle. That's the big caveat. If you're versus Eagle, you need to be more aggressive and grab an early lead and use a devastating Super CEO power, or else Eagle will steamroll you, due to the fact that his Super CEO power is even more powerful in the late game than Olaf's is. However, in most situations, Olaf can be fine as a stally CEO, and he's equally good in fog and standard format due to how global damage works, but I'd say generally it's a little bit stronger in fog due to the fact that Eagle is more overpowered in standard. Regarding maps, Olaf generally loves medium to larger maps, with lots of plains and forests and less roads, so his snow is even more devastating to your opponent's movement. He prefers maps with less contested properties, so he can sit back and chill and not be down properties before releasing his Super CO power. Olaf is sort of in a sweet spot. He doesn't like small maps like Sammy and Max, but he also doesn't like maps that are too big where Eagle can really build up his forces and have a devastating Super CO power. In general, I'd say he likes the medium, but generally trend to larger maps, especially in Fog. Next up, we have Eagle. And if I'm being honest, I have a love-hate relationship with Eagle. I've had a few games where I've been ahead in income, ahead in units, basically ahead the entire game, but my opponent uses a very strong Eagle superpower and basically wins the game on the spot. If you have a 2,000, 3,000 income advantage, you aren't safe from this Eagle superpower. Basically, Eagle superpower can be used in a variety of ways. First off, it allows you to use all of your non-infantry units. They're allowed to move again in the same turn. Moving twice in one turn is so broken because it allows Eagle to do things other CEOs can't even dream of. Basically, he can conduct hit and run tactics where he uses his battle copters to attack an opponent unit and then retreat before an anti-air can get it next turn. But even stronger is he can use it for his indirects. He can move an indirect into range of one of your units during the first part of his turn pop the Super CO power, and then fire from where he is in the second part of the turn. This enables him to basically obliterate enemy walls. So the first thing you want to consider when facing Eagle is to kick him out as soon as possible. You do not want him to amass units or he will decimate you. Another scary thing about Eagle's Super CO power is the fact that you can use it at the end of your turn as Eagle, which enables you to get up charged by any means necessary during your turn. I've seen people sack battle copters, sack units in general, just to get some extra charge to reach that threshold, and then pop the Super CO power, catching their opponent completely off guard and likely devastating them in the process. Due to the mechanics of a Super CO power, Eagle is easily the stalliest CO in Tier 2, and probably the entire game. As Eagle, you want to focus on prolonging the game and amassing units so your Super CO power is even more powerful. As I mentioned earlier, being down properties is not the end of the world as Eagle, as long as you can mount a strong enough comeback using your Super CO power. While Eagle is a strong CO overall, he has a high skill threshold compared to the other COs. You really need to know how to have fully abuse him in his Super CO power to compete on the higher levels. I've seen lower level players struggle to use his Super Power effectively, whereas higher level players, utilizing his Super CO power, they can compete with Tier 1 COs like Hawk on most maps. So it really depends on your skill level, but Eagle, typically as you become better as a player, Eagle becomes more and more viable. In general, Eagle likes larger, non-aggressive and choky maps with lots of mountains, whereas Copters can roam free from anti-air and he can hide behind choke points to build up his army before popping his super power. He generally prefers maps with three bases or more so he can amass his army quicker, and he also likes to have at least one airport on the map so he can fully utilize his stronger air units. Don't even consider using him on smaller maps where he's hard countered by Max and Sammy. Eagle also prefers Standard over Fog due to the fact that he can see all the enemy units and very accurately plan his Super CO power to fully utilize it to the maximum potential. Another thing Eagle can do when using his Super CO power is build vehicles from a base and then use his Super CO power, remove them from the base, and then create infantry units in that same turn ultimately giving him three or more extra units. Now we have Sammy, the infantry and small map specialist. Overall, she's probably the weakest CO in tier two. However, there are some niche times where she can be incredibly strong and blow away the competition. Sammy's strength is her strong infantry, and by nature, her early capture game, where she must secure income advantage early to compete with other COs in this tier. 
She can effectively interrupt enemy infantry capturing properties because her infantry always win one-on-ones if she attacks first, even if she's attacking from a road. On the other hand, if her infantry begin to capture at full health, they will always capture it unless they are brought down to 3 HP or less, which is impossible to stop by any one unit less powerful than a medium tank or a max tank. One of the biggest misconceptions with Sammy is a lot of people just see her and think, huh, I'll just mix spam. The thing about mechs is they have very limited mobility and they take forever to reinforce your army. I understand they're incredibly strong and they have use, but and I understand that Sammy's vehicles are weaker, but theoretically, if you're playing Sammy correctly, you should have secured an income advantage over your opponent. So your vehicles might be weaker, but you should theoretically have more of them because you have more funds. Now don't get me wrong, Sammy's mechs do have some good usage, especially if you utilize her transport bonus. All of her APCs and T-copters, etc. get one plus movement, so this can easily allow you to ferry your mechs from your base all the way to the front lines in a turn or two. So her mechs do have usage, but just don't spam them every single turn. Another thing to keep in mind when using mechs is you don't want to have them exposed to enemy infantry. If you leave a mech exposed, your enemy is going to attack that mech and get a cost advantage every single time they attack you. So you want to keep your mechs generally behind a wall of your own infantry and then pop a CO power or super CO power and then go to town with your mechs. Similar to the other COs in tier 2, Sammy's super power is something to behold. You can really change the game or even get an HQ cap using her infantry during the Super CO power. It enables all her infantry to move two extra spaces and to capture an opponent property in a single turn. Now this can be provide wild income swings. For example, if you capture six properties in one turn, it can completely alter the calculus of the game. Another thing about Sammy's Super CO power is you can just hold it in your pocket. You don't have to pop it immediately. For example, maybe you want to position your infantry closer to the enemy HQ before popping it so you can maybe get an HQ cap, or maybe you want to ensure that you can gain six properties on uh, maybe a turn or two later than capturing just two properties now. As a general rule of thumb for me personally, I don't pop her super CO power unless I'm going to either get an HQ cap or I'm going to capture at least three properties in the turn. In terms of maps, Sammy generally thrives on smaller maps and maps with tons of bases, where she can effectively pump out infantry and mechs every single turn. On the map Caustic Finale, she is incredibly powerful, way better than any other tier 2 CO, and is only really challenged in tier 1 by Von Bolt. And when you ask, well, when do I choose Sammy and when do I choose Max, because they both like small maps, in general my rule of thumb is, two bases, you go Max. Three bases is a toss-up depending on the amount of mountains and chokiness, whereas Max hates mountains due to the strength of artillery and Sammy loves them, I typically go with Sammy on chokier maps. And for th four bases, Sammy all day, no questions asked. Sammy also drops off in Fog, whereas in Standard she's ranked tier 2, and Fog she drops all the way down to tier 4 with the likes of Jake and Adder. Now why is this? Well the reason is twofold. For one thing, Infantry walls aren't as much of a presence in Fog as they are in Standard, so infantry play around that and breaking walls, etc. isn't as much of a big deal. Another reason is, using her Super CO power is a lot easier to prevent her using it very effectively in Fog than it is in Standard play, because opponents might have units on top of the cities that the Sammy player doesn't know about, maybe they're more defended than she thinks, the HQ could be defended and she can't really plan it out. You can't start the turn and think, oh, I'm going to capture six properties using my Super CO power in Fog, because you can't really tell. All right, everyone, that wraps up Tier 2. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. Hope you learned something new. And I'll see you next time for Tier 1. Peace.